What's going on, Storm Nation? This is your boy, Rich Morrow, AKA Rich TV. And I'm down in Orange County at Mark Baker's private facility with a few of my homies about to get a session in that you don't want to miss. Uh, I got a few familiar faces that you'll recognize, but you'll be able to see a wide range of amateurs all the way to pros and how he would critique them and be able to take your game to the next level. We're probably going to throw a few shots, let him kind of check us out and see what you know, me, we may need to apply. You guys will be able to be in on that. But after that, hopefully we're able to apply the notes that he gives to us. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but we're going to do our best. But it should be really fun. Um, everybody's excited. Mark is one of the GOATs. He has trained and worked with everybody and has bowled with everyone. And he is somebody that you definitely want to absorb as much information from as you can. So we're going to get to it. We're going to have us a fun day and we're going to get it in. Quite catch that one. 70 30, lower body to swing. See, as a coach, that's as good as it gets. You can tell as soon as it left your hand. He is much closer to being in time, I think. So we're just trying to get him to stay level through the bottom of the swing. So he keeps adding that rotation a little bit later. So his ball, he sees his ball make that move at 45 feet. They're pros, they're expecting to see their ball do a very specific thing. How do we create that? And it's all feel for the player. So I'm just trying to give him some different ideas on how to create the feel that he wants. Because once he sees what he wants to see, then you just back off and let him bowl. It's like a basketball player. Once you, you get him right, you just let him lose. You gotta right. see it go through the hoop. So it's always about feel and how to create that, to create that look he wants to see down lane. 11 A minuses would be very good. They there always you say, go. It? They say eight and a half good shots a game. That's it. A minus is what the goal is, not A plus, because everything else feels bad and, you know, Right. <laughs> so that's going to get there. So as a coach, I'm watching certain things. I'm watching how his ball goes in the lane. He got a little out there, a little longer, and his hand was a little softer. Mm -hmm. And so the ball made that distinctive move down lane. But before that, he was faster and a little bit more forward. So his hand was quicker. So when your hand's quicker, very rarely does it hook down lane. That's the one he wants to take on tour and throw every time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm winning the US Open if I got that one every time. Right. So if you break it down and look at it, it's just all those things happen. He stayed more level. His hand rotated later. The ball didn't see the first 45 feet, and you see a very distinctive move on the back end. I think we are trying to achieve the same exactly, thing. It's exactly. just from different approaches. So Correct. It's, it's good to hear different sides of it and just think about it differently because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it gets a little monotonous sometimes. You know, your body just gets familiar with that. So last year I was hurt. Um, I'm not going to use that as an excuse, but you know, if Belmo's going to make the eight and a half good shots a game and I'm only making six, obviously I have no chance. So this year I'm feeling pretty good, feeling probably 95% plus. I've been bowling pretty well lately. Um, it's really just kind of keeping myself there. Everything comes back to doing what I need to do. So, you know, thinking about the scores, all that stuff, it's just a distraction, it a so. I think that's the biggest thing. A yeah. lot of people underestimate the mentality that you have to have as a bowler and right. the mental aspect of the game. It's, <laughs> I feel like 80% of the battle half of the time. Yeah, our first week on tour, the scores were really high, and I, you know, I'll admit, I kind of succumbed to the score watching and going, hey, man, I'm a, I only got 2.30 this game. The pace is 2.30. Like, I'm not moving in the cut. And those are all things I shouldn't be thinking about. But it's, uh, it's tough sometimes when they're sc scrolling the scores right in front of our faces. And, and you, know, you see the big scores around you. But the most important thing is to just dial in and focus on what you can do. So 
So this is pretty easy. It's easier if we use the video. So we're working out with Anthony. He took some time off and had an injury to his hip. When you get to here, we're trying to get that. See that slide? How the slide is going slightly left of his pivot step. We're trying to get that slide to get back in. He had some in his injury to his right hip. So he caused him to pull away. That one was pretty good. Kept his head quiet. And obviously the ball reaction is what we're looking for. But at, as he's come back from the injury, we're trying to get a slide a little straighter so a swing doesn't pull down as much. So his hand is staying more behind the ball and less over the top. Which is, I find, a very common miss for a lot of bowlers who slide left of their pivot step. Much, much better. I've been working with Anthony since he bowled juniors. So that's a few years back. Uh, we've taken a couple years off, COVID, he had a little injury. So we're back at it, trying to get him back to that level where he's getting ready to win that first PBA region. Mark has seen me go from a bratty little kid who thinks he can, <laughs> thinks he you can you beat didn't everybody. Listen, you didn't listen much I, in the beginning. I didn't listen to anything. My game has progressed so much as a result of Mark. And I don't think a lot of those foundational building blocks, if Mark hadn't helped me set them, I don't think I'd be able to do what I'm doing now. Even through, and you know, this is another renaissance that I'm going through Mark. I, I hurt my back and my hip pretty bad. And funny enough, fun fact, Mark had a similar injury right in the same spot in my back. So if there's anybody who's gonna help me get through that, it's gonna be him. So I hope he can push me to the, the next level and keep going. Goal this year, I wanna win. I wanna get my first uh, regional title. I came close a couple years ago. I had a second, had a third. Um, don't wanna miss any cuts as well. And then hopefully we can make Team USA this year. So that'd be cool. And get on the tour next year. That'd be cool, yeah. yeah not Thanks, D. <laughs> the better they are, the tougher you have to be. Because a guy like Darren, his, his sense of touch and feel is so extreme that if you tell him it's a good shot and they know it's not a good shot, then, the, then you'll lose trust. I won't trust you. He wants, he wants honesty. He doesn't need me to pat him on the back. Yeah. He's got a mom. As the player gets to a higher level of skill, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of tour players, Tommy Jones and Chris Barnes and... Bill O'Neill and now A, you know, A.J. Johnson and Chris Vi, you need to tell him the truth. He wants the truth. He doesn't want me to pat him on the back because he threw a three-bagger. He wants to know why that third one that struck didn't strike the right way. Yeah. So it's more of an extreme thing. So there's a sliding scale. If you're 105, I'm never going to say anything mean to you ever. Yeah. Hey, man, you hit, the, you hit some pins. That was good. <laughs> I mean, it's all relative. I mean, you hit the pin nearest you. We're, getting, we're making progress. Yeah. So as you have to take that in consideration as you coach. I tend to be pretty blunt and pretty honest, but I don't think I'm ever mean. Yeah. The accuracy piece comes before the hook. I mean, a lane is 60 feet, so 45 feet of the lane is accuracy. 15 feet of the lane is where you hook it. Yeah. They start out trying to hook it. So if you look at your arm, I make it like 60 feet from my elbow to my fingertips. So that means my wrist would be 45 feet. So this forearm is actually more important than this. Mm -hmm. This is only responsible for 15 feet, but new bowlers tend to think this is responsible for the whole lane. I need to learn the pro release. I'm like. Okay, you can't do two plus two yet, and you're going to string math at MIT. There's some math involved here to get where you want. I get it's cool. I do. I wish I could throw it like EJ Tackett. Who doesn't? But you got to start here as a new bowler, be in balance, hit a target, have a nice release, and as you get better, adding power gets easier. For sure. Adding power first is a very tricky thing to get accurate mm. because they tend to get frustrated and quit. Yeah, and some people have the power probably and don't have anything else just because they're athletes or whatever. Correct. You got to take your you got to take how athletic they are into play. That's like when you do a first lesson, you got to you know, what's their what's their bowling IQ? What's their skill set IQ? How fast do they pick things up? How well do they hear? Yeah. So giving a lesson, you have to factor all those things in, in the first 10 minutes to figure out which way the lesson's going to go. We get here, and now this arm's just gonna do all the work. Yeah. See, what happens is when that shoulder does all the work, now your hand has gotten to the outside of the ball mm -hmm. before it's the bottom of your foot. But more importantly, your breastplate is now aiming at the 17. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to throw it somewhere over here to the yeah. right. You've mm -hmm. turned it in the wrong spot in your shoulders, so you're trying to wipe away it, and it cuts it off. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the ball reaction is not what we want. Mm -hmm. So, what you wanna do is make 70%, every shot you throw, 100% mm -hmm. effort between your lower body and your swing. Yep. Because you're strong through here, I mean, mm -hmm. right through here and here, mm -hmm. it's easy to wanna to grab a ball as an athlete. Mm -hmm. It's more of a swing, that was a throw. Okay. So, 70 30, roll it off your hand. Don't try to hit it so hard. Gotcha. There we go, we got action. 
And that's how lessons work. I think he knows what he's talking about, people. <laughs> Three shots, baby. I think now, we don't know that you hustled about. him on purpose. We're not telling him that, right? <laughs> no, we're not going to tell him that. But now watch, now watch over here in the video. See how much softer you start? Yeah. So you're not running after it? Mm -hmm. See, now when you get there, now look at your chest. Yeah. Now it's your up. chest is aiming where the tape is. Mm -hmm. So your hand's going to look at your hand now. It's yeah. behind the ball before you were on the side. There you go. Wow. But you don't fall off. Yeah, I don't. I'm balanced. So if you go back here a ways, how I look at it, bowlers are all the same, no matter who they are. When a bowler throws a good, they stay in balance. All the thing ever swings is their throwing arm, and they take a step straight back when they're done. Watch this. Arm swinging, no movement, and a step straight back. Wow. You guys are all trained to do the same thing. Yeah. That is the universal move of a good shot. That's great. I threw it so good, I don't need to give any help. Yeah, so... I'm going to try to do that again. There we go. A bit right. There we go. So, got some real important things I think I'm taking from that. The 70-30 rule. For those of you that don't know what he's talking about, using 100% body effort, as he says, right? 70% of that needs to be on your lower body so that you're not using, you know, too much effort in your upper body, right? It needs to be a 100%. swing. A lot of times we want to get our you know, power from our shoulders and things that should come from your lower body makes the 30% a lot easier. And I feel like that's something for me extremely important because it helps my timing a little bit more as well when I'm focusing on my lower body. It really, it really makes yeah. it a swing. Once that, mm -hmm. once that upper number gets above 51%, then mm -hmm. it's a throw. Yeah. So then you immediately lose consistency of release, mm -hmm. but more importantly, you lose all your accuracy. Yeah. And invariably, you'll see it because when you pull your shoulder up, mm -hmm. it tends to move your head a lot, so you lose your balance. Yeah. So now you're out of balance and you're missing your target, so the feedback is really bad. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what the pros, I said the two best, I think, Parker Bone, Pete mm -hmm. Weber, mm -hmm. they're like 90-10. Yeah. That's why they've been in balance and they've thrown it so good for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Now you look at a guy like Jason Belmonte. Mm -hmm. He's like 88-12. As a two-hander, that's unworldly. Yeah. So his balance is always so good, mm -hmm. and he's actually very, very accurate mm -hmm. because he really doesn't use a swing with his arms. He really gets so all of it, too. It's and he does it by impressive. using his lower body and timing and everything. So mm -hmm. if you look at the pros, that's why their balance is so good because mm -hmm. that lower number is always bigger than the upper number. Sure. Good to know. See? We learned a lot today, folks, and we got my boy Lamecki up next, a uh, former college bowler, so, you know, someone that has been – you know, around people that have been teaching him, you know, his whole life, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, how you guys end up. Well, he's got a 600 rev rate. I should do okay. <laughs> I just got to get it in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, with Lockie, I've never coached him. I've only watched him bowl. Today, we worked on a couple of things. We're trying to get his head to be a little calmer. He has a very, very high rev rate. So, we're just trying to get some accuracy involved because if he's accurate, the pins fall down just fine. There you go. He gets through it. Look how quiet his head is. From here through here, his head barely moves. So their big advantage is when they throw the ball, if the ball was the earth, two-handers tend to throw it from the Antarctica. If they're not by the equator, they get a little bit lower. So he gets on it. He's got plenty of rev rate. And then if he hits a pocket more, the, the pins do the, do the right thing. So if he can control his head, he can control his hand. If he can do that, he has accuracy. If he does that, he has score. All right. So coaching two-handers is a completely different animal than coaching one-handers. They show up with a lot of power and rev rate, and they have to learn accuracy. One-handers show up with a lot of accuracy to teach them power. So my job's a lot of fun. I do something different with everybody I coach. And that's what power is. Good shot. Make sense? Yes, sir. Good bowling. Thank you, sir. Very, very good. So Earl's been bowling on lane one the whole time. He's going to come over here, be throwing really good shots, hitting the pocket a lot. Well, lane two hooks a lot more. So we're just going to make a stone cold guess, see how good I am at this. So we're going to move Earl's feet eight left, his eyes five left, because I'm doing the math for him. I want him to slide around 30, go between third and fourth arrow, try to get to the tape down lane. I'm betting on what Darren and Anthony did, burn the track up. Let's see how we do. We got action. We got action. That's how this works. One and done, baby. All right, that's the end of my show. See you guys later. See you all on tour. So the moral of the story is always have a coach line you up. <laughs> so anybody that bowls a two finger, no thumb, it's always about your legs. He's really strong. 
So his swing's short, but he gets his body ahead of his swing. So his hand does the, he's taking advantage of his release with no thumb in it. So you just always got to make sure they don't try to throw with your shoulder. He rolls it really, really well. So Tom Doherty would be your number one guy for this. That's actually one of my favorite bowlers. It has to be. Has to be. Has to be. <laughs> That's the only guy. You got no choice. No choice. <laughs> we got another action. We got action again. Well, I found a guy I like working with. This guy listens. <laughs> Right over that third arrow, right between the tape, stone nine, nothing you can do about that. Mark, I have a question. Fire away. What are some of the disadvantages I have of being having no thumb? You're, the lanes are always going to seem like they hook a little bit because it's hard to generate ball speed. Got it. Because with no thumb, the length of your backswing is uh, predicated by your, if you get too high, the ball actually falls off. Yeah. So you're always going to, you know, like Tom Glory being the you know, best example of what you're doing, he is really big and strong. So Tom can get away with a very short backswing. So if you don't have your thumb in it, you've got to get your legs underneath you. Your backswing is going to be restricted how long it can be because there's no thumb. So you're always going to have to play the lanes a little more left and have to hook it. Okay. I think we'll finish on that one. Thank you, sir. My new favorite guy as a coach. There we go. Hi, Mom. Put that on your fridge. <laughs> Come on. So Tone being a new two-hander, you're always worried about balance and timing. We're trying to get his left arm to get a little longer back to get his legs underneath him. So he rolls the ball, he doesn't throw with his shoulders and fall off. Every time he does it, we get some pretty good results. Let's see how we do. Closer, Tone, closer. There we go. There we go, you got action. That was a really good shot. Thank you, sir. Appreciate All good, it. man. Thank you. Like Mark was telling me, I feel like I'm trying to get too close to the lane and it's making me drop my body. So now I'm kind of reversing everything, taking a little less muscle out of it and standing tall like my body already naturally is. Seemed to really help my rotation be a lot more effortless and my balance and my aim more effortless as well. Yeah, he, he tried to get more of a swing into it. So as, as the ball, his hands would stay in the arc of the ball longer, get it on the lane, turn it later, then his accuracy showed up, and then the balls are looking where it's supposed to. For new, being new to it, he did amazing. Very good. What's it like to work with this very group of bowlers? This is kind of what I do every day for a living. I can't control who comes to the door at my training center. So today we probably had from 150, 160 all the way to a tour player, Darren Tang. So for me, it's fun. It's just changing gears. And when you bought every 10, 15 pins difference in average, you will find certain things you work on more with others. Some it'll be release, some will be balance. It'll be timing, it'll be about accuracy. A lot of it's always about lane play. So for me, it's what a, this is like a typical day to me. This was no different. I just did it really fast. Everybody was great. So this was pretty easy. This is what I do for a living. I'm Mark Baker, professional bowling instructor. I tend to coach mainly here at the Westpac Training Center, my little private two-lane training center. We have Specto, we have Strike Seeker. I just came out with a brand new coaching series called the Games Change Video Series. I did a one-handed instructional video. I did a two-handed instructional video. In both of them, I took a swing at lane play. Uh, not many people take a chance at it. I invented a thing called the Baker Box. Now the Baker Box today worked phenomenal. It was just amazing how good it worked. So if you go to my website, markbakerbowling.com, and you click on the Games Changed logo, you can buy either a two-handed one. And the cool thing about the two-handed video series, I was so fortunate to bring in the two best of all time. I have Jason Belmonte and Anthony Simonson as my models. So this is as good as it gets. You know, Mr. Belmonte, you know, he invent basically did this thing himself, seven-time player of the year, 15 majors. He's the real deal, and we prove it on video. And Anthony Simonson, he's just as good, but in a different way. On my one-handed instructional video, we have Daniel McEwen, Chris Prather, and I brought in Dave Husted for my senior section. So that's also gone very well. So please, if you want to know more about what I do for a living, 
Check out the videos. Hope to see everybody soon. Mark Baker, out. Thank you.